Hello and welcome to another video for BMGS Tech, this one on taking a 3D model and processing it using software called MeshCam, ready for manufacture on a CNC router. Shout out to Nathaniel here who has produced a Cadet Class F1 in schools car. Although it's not a perfect file, it is a nice looking car and it will be quite suitable for our tutorial today. Assuming that all of your bodywork is in one piece, which you can check by hovering the mouse over and making sure the wings or other components don't highlight green separately, we can click on it and then from the bottom menu go to export selection. We do not need the wheels for this because they will not be manufactured on the router. We need to change it from 123D file to STL file and then call it something that makes sense to you. I'm just calling mine exactly the same thing, but as an STL. The STLs that 123D Design produces break up curved surfaces into many small triangles. So they make quite large files, but quite high quality files. And they're always watertight for 3D printing or for any type of CNC routing or other process. Okay, now we switch to MeshCam, and our first job is to load the STL that we've just made. We reach our first option, and we're going to click 3 axis. Of course, for a cadet cast car, we're allowed to do the axles on the router, and then two passes from the side, the second one being a mirrored version of the first. So, we need to rotate the car. I know from experience that we need to do 90 degrees in the X and the Y, then we hit OK and we have a short wait once again while it processes and recreates all the geometry facing the correct direction. OK, one more change for Nathaniel's, we actually want it to be the other way around, so we can see the Y axis here. So if we rotate 180 degrees around that axis, it should now be facing the left, which is how I have the CNC router set up. Okay, now we're ready to go. Simply a case of following each of the buttons one by one, the final one being to create the toolpath. So, the first one is to define the stock. Stock is the piece of material that you'll be cutting your STL out of. For us, we're going to lock it because the stock is pretty much always the same size. The real block is about 223 long, but with my holder that I've developed to hold uh, the nose end of the car, I always allow for about 215 so I don't damage the holder. The blocks are roughly 50 high and I always leave it at the 64. It can vary a little bit but I leave it at 64 each time for that. We want to untick center X and center Y. We want to move the car the whole way to the right and the whole way to the front. So zero for both of those and then we hit OK. You can see that our white box has expanded to show us how the car fits inside the balsa block and that's looking great so far. When the car is being machined we have a metal rod which goes inside the canister hole to hold the tail end of the car but the nose end of the car is held on the end of the balsa block here so as the car is cut out you can imagine that it would become separated from the tail end which is going to be connected the entire time. Therefore we need to add some supports to hold the nose cone in place. Otherwise it will wobble around and it's just going to damage itself. Okay, so we've got two there. That should be plenty strong. The height above stock I generally leave at the default. That's how much the cutter will lift up as it moves between various parts. This one here is very important. This is the zero position. We want it on the top surface in the bottom right hand corner. And we can see that that's now moved to here. So that's where we're going to position the cutter on the block before we start cutting the car. Next one along is the maximum cutting depth. If we were cutting down 32 with a round nose cutter, it might leave a bit of a lip. So we'll actually set that to 33, which is just over halfway. Remembering that we're going to cut one side, flip it round, cut the other. Next one is the machining region, another very important step. For our car, since this is just solid balsa block here, there's no point wasting time having the cutter zigzag back and forth over it. So generally what we'll do 
is to draw a boundary around the actual parts of the car that need machining. There's no point waiting for the job to cut all the extra parts. The other part of this is that now our two supports will still be attached to the nose of the balsa so it won't come loose part way through the job. Okay, generally at this point I'll then calculate the two axle holes. It takes a couple of seconds to process and it's detected the front and the rear. You can hit OK. Generally I'll just leave all of those settings because once we get to the next screen I can untick whatever I don't want. So for instance here we have our two correct ones here. So I'll untick the spot drill, we don't need that, and I'll untick, oh, apparently we do want that one. So Nathaniel's made his axle hole a little bit too big, but since we have a 6mm cutter in the machine at the time, it doesn't matter that the hole is too big here, because it's still going to drill a 6mm hole in the exact right place. So normally I'll save the toolpath, but it might be a little bit slow for the purpose of this video. Final step is to calculate the actual cutting out of the cut. So we do it in phases. The first one is roughing. Roughing zigzags back and forth over the car, removing excess material. It's going to step down 8 millimeters in depth each time, and it's going to run fairly fast. And above the final surface of the car, it's going to leave half a millimeter behind. If we remove this, we'd need to slow down these passes, otherwise they'd just be taking off way too much material. It could have a lot of friction and catch on fire. Next thing we need to have is a finishing pass, and as you can see from the picture, we're going to get ours to zigzag back and forth over the car, contouring to the exact surface, and we're going to have only half a millimetre in between there. We can up the speed a little bit because we're only cutting at most half a millimetre of wood from the tip each time. You can see for both of these, we have a 6 mil cutter, ball mill, which is stipulated by the rules for cadet class. The last one we do is a pencil cleanup. This will trace around the base of different shapes. So for instance, this rear wing here, it will trace around that after the rest of the car is finished just to make sure it's got the exact shape. We hit OK. The next thing we'll be presented with is a preview of the tool path. Okay, the processing has just finished and we can look through the various parts of the toolpath. Meshcam will let us hide and show the geometry, which is useful or not useful depending on what you're doing. The rapid moves are the cutter moving between various portions. This is where the, the toolpath will be moving around without removing any material. So let's look through the various phases. We have the roughing pass first. If we spin it around, you can see that it's zigzagging around the car, going down 8 mils every time, and roughly following the contours. After this, it's going to look quite rough, but at least most of the material will be removed. If we hide the rapid moves and the geometry, it might be a little bit clearer. You can see it's doing the shape of the car, just not quite to full detail. Next thing it will do is the parallel finish. You can see here it's going very closely to the shape of the car. It's obeying our rule for leaving the supports there, and it's also obeying our rule for staying within the area that we traced. You can see that it's going to zigzag back and forth, very fine resolution, only half a millimetre in between each line. It's going to leave a perfect surface behind. You can see here, because the car is the full height, it's not going to bother zigzagging back and forth on here, which is nice, and saves a little bit of time, a little bit more efficient for us. The last one is the pencil finish. And we can see that it's going to trace around the wing here, it's going to trace around the nose cone, around the canister holder, it's going to trace around inside the wheel arches. It's just going to make sure that all of these areas are perfectly done. We need to leave ticked everything that we want saved, and then it's simply a matter of saving the toolpath. We can estimate our machining time for the way that I cut the ticket. Cadet class, it's generally about half an hour per side, so this one is on half of that.